Good morning, soldier! Guess what? Drill Sergeant Reed is back! It's time to read it. Get your bed made! Get your shoes shined and get in line! Tin hut and suck in that gut, soldier! It's time to talk about some probability stuff today and see if we can get some things reviewed for our EOG boot camp! So, let's go ahead and get that page pulled out right here for probability and we're going to talk about some different types of probability as well as some things about possible outcome today. So here we go, soldier! It's time to get busy with EOG boot camp day six. Here we go! All right, so first thing I want to talk to you about is the fact that there are some different types of probability. There's theoretical probability and experimental probability, okay? Theory comes from your mind. If you've got a mind, that is. Some of you ain't got much of a mind there, but that's what it means, okay? That's what you think is going to happen. Experimental probability, of course, is when you actually do a, an experiment, okay, and you have some results, Usually, when they give you those type of results, they're going to put them into a table, and we're going to do an example of that in just a minute, okay? So, let's talk about theoretical first, all right? So, let's draw us a little spinner here, and let's divide her up into four sections, all right? So, we've got one, two, three, and four there, soldier. Put one, two, three, four in your little spinner. So, theoretically, in your mind, okay, not experimentally, but in your mind, I want you to think about what's the probability of spinning a three- twice in a row, okay? So the probability of spinning three twice in a row. All right, so what's the probability you spin three the first time? Okay, well, that would be one-fourth, okay? So after you do that, what's the probability of spinning three again? Well, that's also one-fourth. Now the question is, hey, soldier, what do you do with those two one-fourths? Do you add them, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them? So the right answer would be to multiply them. So one times one, of course, is one, and four times four gives you 16. So the chance, or the theoretical chance, of you spinning three twice in a row would be a grand total of one sixteenth, okay? So make sure you get the individual probabilities and then multiply them together, because we're gonna do a lot of fraction multiplying here with the probability stuff. All right, let's ask a different question. So. I have two daughters in my family. You guys know Sloan and Lindsay. You've heard me talk about them before. So let's say we were planning on having another child. We're not, but let's say we did, okay? So let's say, what's the probability of having three girls in a row? All right. So again, this is theoretical because we are not having any more children, just to let you know. So the probability of having a girl with our first child, of course, was a half. Okay, then we have our second child. Well, the probability of having a girl was a half. All right, then we have a, another child. What's the probability of her being a girl? It is also a half, okay? Then you multiply those three together. So one times one times one, of course, is one. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. So the probability, theoretically, okay, theoretically of having three girls in a row, the probability of that occurring is one eighth, okay? One out of eight chance that you'll have three girls in a row if you have three children. So just remember, okay, multiply the fractions together. Multiply the fractions together. So let's go down here and do a little experimental table, okay? So let's draw us another little uh, spinner over here, okay? Just so you can kind of see the spinner for this one. I'm going to divide this up into three colors, okay? So let's say that this section is the red section. This section is the blue section. This section is the green section. And this section is the yellow section. All right, so you're probably going to see some questions like this for sure on the EOG. They're going to give you a little table, okay? So let's divide it up here and do a little colors. So we got red, blue, green, and yellow. Red, blue, green, yellow. All right. Now, let's say they say you've spun this thing a few times, and when you did, you did, when you did the experiment, your results were you got three red, seven blue, six green, and four yellow. And those were your experimental results, okay? You actually spun the spinner, okay, a few times. At the moment, you don't know how many times, but let's say you spun it around, and here were your results. Three red, seven blue, six green, four yellow. So the first thing you want to do 
is take these numbers and you want to add them together and get the total, okay? So the total here, of course, that would be 10. That would be 10, so your total would be 20, okay? So you want to add those up and get your total number of spins. Now, let's say it asks you, all right, well, let's say you plan on spending it another 150 times, okay? If you plan on spending it another 150 times, what's the probability of getting green if you spin 150 more times? Okay, so you can see that all right. Let me, move, let me move that up a hair. Okay, so at the moment we know from our experimental results how many times did we get green? Six out of how many total? Twenty. Okay, so you want to start there. You want to write that as your first ratio, six twentieths. All right. Now it's asking you. Okay, well if you spin it 150 more times, how many times you're going to get green? So that would be x over 150 so we're going to set us up a little proportion just like that okay we spun green six times out of 20 and now we want to know how many times if we did it again how many times would we expect to get it out of 150 all right so here's how you do it of course you can take six times 150 right there and then 20 times x so you got 20 x now if you don't know what six times 150 is of course you can use your calculator but i know six times zero zero 6 times 5 is 30, so that would be 900, I'm thinking. All right, I'll just double check it. All right, I'll pull my calculator out just to double check, just to make sure. That would be 6 times 150, not 0.150. All right, and that is 900. All right, so of course then you're going to do 900 divided by 20, because you've got to divide by 20 on both sides. And that means that if you did it 150 more times, you would expect to get 45 green out of the 150. All right, so when it gives you an experimental results table, okay, add up the numbers, find out how many total there are, set you up a little proportion over here and solve it, okay? Six over 20 equals X over 150 for this particular one. All right, let's go on down here. Independent versus dependent events, okay? Independent, of course, means they happen separately Dependent means they depend on each other, okay? So one event affects the other. One has an effect. All right? Now, let's do an independent one first, all right? So let's say you've got a deck of cards. And your deck of cards is numbered 1 to 10. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10. All right, so we've got our deck of cards, and all those are numbered 1 to 10. That's what we're doing here. What is the probability of getting a prime number and then drawing out a number greater than 3? Okay, so we got a deck of cards numbered 1 to 10. We want to know what's the probability we draw a prime number and then a number greater than 3. Okay, and so this means that, of course, you're going to replace the cards. All right, the word would be replace. So after you do the first one, you're going to replace it back in the deck. So first of all, you got to, of course, know which ones of these are the prime numbers, you dang -a -ling. So the prime numbers would be the ones that only have two factors. That would be 2, 3, 5 and seven, okay? Two, three, five, and seven are the prime numbers because the only way you can get those is one times two, one times three, one times five, one times seven. So we got one, two, three, four numbers out of the 10 that are prime numbers, okay? So let's pretend, you know, you reached in there and you pulled out one that was a prime number and then you're gonna replace it and put it back in there. So for the next question, all 10 of the numbers are gonna be in there. So then what's the probability of getting a number that's greater than three? Well, the numbers that are greater than three, of course, are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of ten. Okay? Now, we are going to multiply those probabilities just like we talked about at the top. Okay? We're going to multiply those together. I can go ahead and reduce four tenths. I know that four tenths can both be divided by two, so I can scratch that down to two fifths. Okay? 
Now you could go ahead and cross reduce those as well, but I'm just going to go ahead and multiply it from here, okay? 2 times 7 is 14, 5 times 10 is 50, and then of course I can divide both of those by 2 and simplify it on down to 7 25ths, okay? 7 25ths is what we're looking for. That would be if you do it as an independent event where you replace the card into the deck, okay? Over here on this side, we are not going to replace, okay? So this is the difference. This is what makes this a dependent event. So pay attention. This is where this is a little bit different, okay? So let's say the question is, what's the probability of a prime number and then a prime number, okay? So then we're going to do probability of prime, then don't replace it, and then prime again, okay? So, again, the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So to start with, okay, the probability of pulling out a prime number is 4 tenths. Then you pretend you actually pull a prime number out of the pot, okay, or out of the hat, or out of the whatever. So I'm just going to pretend that I pulled out the number 2, okay. I'm just going to cover it up with a little end of my pen right there. So I pretend I pull out the number 2. All right, there are not 10 cards in there anymore, okay. And there's not 4 of them that are prime. There's only 1, 2, 3 of them that are prime. And there's only 9 left. Okay, so when you do not replace it, that means you're having one less card in the deck. So I can reduce both of these fractions, okay? Four tenths, of course, what you already talked about over there, you can reduce that down to two fifths. And three ninths, of course, reduces down to one third because you can divide both of those by three. And you can divide both of those by two. So that reduces down to two fifths times one third. Of course, if you multiply that, two times one is two. 5 times 3 is 15. You can see there's a different difference here, okay, where you're going down from 10 to 9 when you do not replace. Okay, you're going down from 10 to 9. All right, soldiers, it's time for today's riddle of the day. All right, you ready? So, here's your riddle. What month do all soldiers love to hate? Okay, so there are, of course, 12 answer choices. you got to tell me what month do all soldiers love to hate? Okay? So if you know that, you can send that to me later and let me know that month. Make sure you spell it right. If you don't spell it right, soldier, you're not getting anything. All right. Now, to finish up today, we're going down here and talk about possible outcomes. And we've got to do this. Too. All right. Right, two choices in possible outcomes. That would be the counting principle is one of them. Counting principle. And you can also, of course, do tree diagrams. All right, so let's say in the first one here, I'm going to split this in half. We are definitely going to use the counting principle over here, okay? So let's say you've got to figure out how many possible outfits you could make, okay? How many possible outfits you could make if you have six shirts, four pairs of pants, and four pairs of shoes. Okay, so how many different possible outputs can you make? All right, so if you're going to use the counting principle, okay, you'd say, of course, we got six shirts times four pants times four shoes, and you just multiply all that together, okay? Of course, six times four right there would be 24, and 24 times four means there would be 96 possible outfits you could make if that was the case, okay? If you had six shirts, four pairs of pants and four different pairs of shoes, you can make 96 different outfits. That, of course, is called the counting principle, where you just multiply them together. All right, let's come over here to this one. Let's talk about how to do a tree diagram. Let's say you're going to go to lunch, okay? And when you go to lunch, here are your choices. You've got a main dish you can pick. Your main dishes are going to be taco, burrito, quesadilla. Taco, burrito, quesadilla. Make sure I spell it right, quesadilla. All right. Then, of course, your sides. You can get rice or beans. And then for your drink, you can get water, tea, or soda. Now, of course, 
let's say what's the probability of you getting taco with beans and tea okay what's the probability you get the one that's taco beans and tea if you wanted to make a tree diagram okay that would be taco burrito quesadilla so I'm just gonna start out with those and you got your little branches coming off okay gotta have two branches because each one of those is gonna have rice and beans rice and beans rice and beans and then off each one of those of course you're gonna have water tea soda 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 and water tea soda all right so all together remember you want to come out here on the very end and count up all these options so that's three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen so there's eighteen possible choices out of those eighteen possible choices out there how many of them are taco beans and tea taco beans and tea is one out of the eighteen okay so that's how you do it if you did it as a tree diagram you could also do it this way what's the probability of getting a taco that's one third okay what's the probability of getting beans that's one half What's the probability of getting tea? Half a chance of getting beans. One third chance of getting tea. Of course, if you multiply all that together, one times one times one is one. Three times two is six. Six times three is 18. So you could also do it that way, where you multiply the individual probabilities together. All right. All right, let's keep on fighting the good fight, soldiers. Keep on battling the good battle. We want to beat these enemies down. All right. Until next time, this is Drill Sergeant Reed saying, you are dismissed.